Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be local nursery plant shopping at Callaway's Nursery off of Custer Road on Highway 121 in Plano, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting that like button and following me on Instagram at Growfolds. I would also invite you guys to subscribe to my channel with the notification bell on just so you can visit me and um, join me on my one hour plan shopping videos that I do daily. Hopefully we can get some more engagement and subscribers from all of my videos. Um, I know you guys are ready to go see some more haunted ghost. Um, but for now, I wanted to go out in broad daylight to show you guys the beautiful Callaway's Nursery. So Callaway's Nursery is actually a chain of nurseries out in um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is where I'm based at. And this is one of my favorite nurseries to go visit. For those that have regularly watched my videos, I feature this um, nursery quite often, but I can never get tired of going into this nursery because it is a large plant nursery out in Dallas. And you can see here, they've got some massive plants plants here. Um, they've already got some huge plants available. And obviously I always like to look at these water fixtures here. I've been thinking about adding that to my back patio and you can see here, I'm going to pan over here and look at all of these fountains. Um, the thing I like about Callaway's nursery is they feature so many different plants. So if you're into like aeroids, um, indoor, outdoor house plants, common plants for the indoors, all of the above they come in so many different shapes sizes colors prices at callaway's nursery and if you're into like japanese maples outdoor landscaping outdoor gardens they also have that they also have um, herbs they got a lot of annuals and perennials they've got a lot of different types of plants at callaway's and you know you know you are a plant foldy and for those that are new to the channel i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies you know that I always talk about Aglonema red siams. Aglonema red thyme is an easy to care for plant. And this plant here, I would mistaken as an Aglonema um, silver bay, but apparently it's an Aglonema emerald bay. Not really sure what the difference is with the Aglonema silver bay and emerald bay is. What I do know is that this one is only for $49.99 in a three gallon planter or a 10 inch planter. Not a bad price at all, considering that this Aglonema is already large. It's absolutely stunning. And with Aglonema is one of the easiest um, plants to take care of. They can um, tolerate lower light conditions and they don't need a lot of watering. So that's always a good thing. And what I would also tell you is Monstera Deliciosa. So we've always been looking at, or actually um, the, the it plant or what's sought after is like a variegated Monstera Albo or maybe the Monstera Thai Constellation. But this one is only for $39.99 and you can already see that it is a very nice size plant. Um, the fenestrations are there. And that's the thing I like about Callaway's Nursery is there's always large plants at very cost effective prices. I always talk about whenever you go plant shopping, just comparing the different types of pricing. They have sometimes big box stores are um, cheaper, but sometimes local plant nurseries like Callaway are cheaper as well. Like this one right here is a philodendron red, um, red um, imperial red for $29.99. Um, you would mistake that as a um, philodendron black cardinal. What a beautiful looking philodendron. This one doesn't necessarily have to like trail up a totem pole or moss pole. It's more of a bushy um, compact um, type of growth pattern. And then this one right over here is a philodendron xanadu beautiful looking philodendron this one is only for $24.99 and you get all of this plant here so that's the thing i love about callaway's nursery they source out so many large plants for very cost effective pricing so if you are a local plant foldy or somebody that lives out in the north dallas fort worth area there are so many different callaways to visit but the one off of 121 um, highway 121 and custer road is one of the best ones to go to it's one of the largest ones and here is another bromeliad. What a beautiful looking bromeliad. Look at how high variegation it is. It's pretty much all variegated and you can see that the, the striping is really nice. This one is only for um, $19.99. That's not a bad price at all. 
I did land a very good price for a um, bromeliad out in Kroger's. Kroger is a grocery store out here. Um, there's some several grocery stores all over the country, and um, they have been recently haunted with a specific type of ghost. And I do want you guys to stay at the very end to see these ghosts. I know, I know that I have um, premiered that particular ghost in a previous video, but you will not believe what other type of ghost I was able to find at a Kroger nursery. So please make sure that you're staying tuned to the very end of this video. And you can see here, one of my favorite Chifleras. This one is only for $29.99. Now I was able to buy one that was similar in this size at a Home Depot out in Huntsville, Texas of all places. It's a small town north of um, Houston and I was able to get it for $9.99. Now this particular highly variegated Chiflera, I was able to, I'm actually currently let me, um, you know, correct myself. Currently growing this out in full sun, south, um, south facing, um, and it is doing very well. You know, growing this particular um, Chiflera outdoors has done very well for me. I thought that with its high variegation that it would burn, but it is actually really thriving and pushing out a lot of new growth. This particular Chiflera can get up to three feet in height and width, so I'm really excited about that. But I want to pan over here and just show you all of these beautiful plants. Look at how large this is. And I do love um, shopping at this Callaway's because there are quite a bit of people that shop here, but I, I tend to go at times where there's not as much high traffic so I can pretty much avoid um, filming people in my plant videos I have been doing plant videos for a uh, close to five months now and it's just really exciting to be able to film plants for you and you can see here Diphenbachia sublime or what you would call a Diphenbachia sparkle according to Costa Farms let's check out the price and see how much it costs this one is for $39.99 that is not a bad price at all. Look at how large this Diefenbachia is. Look at how beautiful the variegation is. It's got a very minty variegation. The problem with Diefenbachia is it is not an easy plant to take care of. I repeat, um, some people get like sucked into buying that particular plant, but the thing about it is it does require a lot of high, um, high light conditions. Um, you need to make sure that you're consistent with the watering and just the light light requirements a Diefenbachia needs is, is what makes it really challenging and then over here you can see another beautiful monstera deliciosa um you can see that this is um fenestrated it's got a large leaf and i love um monstera deliciosa you know we've been looking at a lot of variegated monstera so there's a lot of different types of monstera variegated monsteras out in the market but you know the original green for the og is still um you know a very classic very easy to care for plant the only thing i would say is if you're gonna get a monstera deliciosa make sure that you have the space for it because it will get very large in um, no time here is an, a massive philodendron green congo beautiful philodendron green congo and i'm actually curious to see how much the price is because this is massive here i would say it's about three feet in um width and the height is about three feet as well so it's a massive plant i'm going to spin it around and see what the pricing is again callaways is another local plant nursery that i would say is a good alternative to big box store plant shopping because you get a lot of um, varieties of plants this one is not a bad price at all that is only for um, $39.99 that is not a bad price considering look at how large of a plant you would get now with philodendron green congo it does require bright indirect light for it to really thrive and then over here we've just got a typical chiflera plant I do like chifleras or umbrella plants I do prefer the um, variegated versions um chiflera plants their care tips would be, again, bright indirect light. That's what they would prefer, although they can tolerate a little bit lower light conditions if needed. It would just be slower in its growth. And as I pan over here, look at all of the plants here. This is a massive nursery. And again, I am just very fortunate to be able to sh um, plant shop at the Dallas Fort Worth area. There's several plants and you can see right here, um, we've got a beautiful Schifflera. Now, I believe this is a little bit pricey, though. This is for $89.99, $89.99. Um, so I think that's a little bit pricey for a large Schifflera plant, especially since it's not variegated. Um, you know, some people would want this. This isn't a 14-inch diameter planter. So it is a massive plant. I just don't know if I would pay close to $90 for that. And then here is a forest full of Diefenbachia. Let me tell you about Diefenbachia. 
If you are an indoor houseplant collector that's starting to grow indoor plants, buy yourself a Diefenbachia. So whenever you go to a big box store, you'll see like these small Diefenbachias and three and a half inch planters. Look at the potential of how large they will get in a couple years. So that's just an easy plant to take care of. And then over here is Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue. Proud Filipino here. My um, my family is from the Philippines, and um, Epipremnum and panatum are pretty much considered weeds in the Philippines. They are very endemic to the Philippines, and the Epipremnum and panatum um, Cebu blue actually is endemic into the islands of Cebu, Philippines. Cebu, Philippines, actually, and it's really interesting that um, they have these growing up a totem pole. Notice how large the leaves are. That is really the natural way of an Epipremnum and panatum, and you can see as it comes up a pole the leaves get larger and they start to fenestrate this one is for $169.99 a little bit pricey but you know I that is totally understandable considering this is a semi-mature form of an epipremnum panatum cebu blue and then over here is a proven winners um, um diefenbachia look at that beautiful variegation and coloration on this particular diefenbachia you know proven winners is a great place um you know a great plant source to get some really good plants i always think that proven winners has some amazing hybrids they've got some high quality healthy plants and i like it you know with diefenbachia again though please make sure you are giving it a lot of bright indirect light if you don't give it enough lighting you know bright indirect lighting conditions your plant will get very leggy and suffer and then over here we've got more plants that we're looking at so i'm just you know focusing on all of the large plants so this is a particular um ficus plant this one is a ficus um ali i believe look at the the leaves on this one this one has some very narrow leaves it is in the tree form so that's the really cool thing about ficus one thing to note about ficus and i've mentioned this in a lot of my videos is if you're going to grow any type of ficus like even this one this is a variegated ficus benjamina in a braided tree form you need to make sure that you are giving this a lot of light a lot of bright indirect light you know you talk about like ficus larata ficus benjamina ficus elastica all of the ficus if you don't have that bright lighting condition, sometimes I just grow my ficus plants out in full sun in um, outdoors and they just do fine. Um, they just need a lot of light because for some reason that's what they really require. You do not want to try to grow one of these plants, especially this tree form right here, ficus benjamina, in lower light conditions. So if you have to get like a grow bulb to actually, you know, grow lights to actually give that lighting, please do. And this one right here is for $99. Um, look at how established and fused the braided um, ficus benjamina is. You can see that the trunk has braided up. I think that's a really good structure. Really like that a lot. Love the variegation. I just know from my um, household, while I have a lot of bright indirect light natural light i reserve that for other um, plants so that's the thing when you when you go plant shopping or when you start to collect plants consider your um your space in your home do you have enough lighting conditions do you know the plant care tips do you know how much um, time you have to invest in plants so that's just a couple of my tips i always mention that and this is actually a beautiful um, Ming Aurelia. This is a large one. So typically you'll see Ming Aurelias in three and a half inch planters at a big box store, but you can see the full potential of that. And that's the reason why I like to go to Callaway's Nursery. Um, I know that I've been featuring a lot of these um, Callaway's Nurseries in pretty much every video all this week, but I am really proud and happy and um, just, I love the fact that I can go to a um, Callaway's Nursery that is literally um, within a 10 to 15 minute, minute radius um, from where I'm based at and, and see this. Um, these are plants that you would see in a big box store. And while big box stores will offer maybe more cost effective um, pricing, maybe cheaper pricing, I will say Callaway's has high quality plants in different sizes and shapes, colors, that you name it. And they have really good um, customer service. If you ever are gonna visit the Dallas-Fort Worth area, please make sure you look into a Callaway's Nursery. Now, Callaway's Nursery is what I would call a local chain of plant nursery. So it's almost like a nursery, a big box nursery store, but like, you know, obviously it's not a big box store, but you can see here, I just panned over a bunch of this ficus lyrata here. I do love fiddle fig leaf. Mine is actually doing very well. And that's the thing. I was able to find a fiddle fig leaf in a six inch starter planter for 99 cents. Like 
You really can't beat that. And that's the thing that I love. And that's the reason why I make these plan shopping videos. Um, I may not be the most versed or more, most expert when it comes to plans. I just love talking about them. So, you know, for, for, for those that have followed me for a couple of months now, and for those that are, um, you know, recently joining me, I will say thank you for always tuning into my live premiere chats. Um, I typically try to um, schedule my live premieres at 7 p.m. just because I want to bring a community of people. It doesn't matter what age, um, um, ethnicity, country you're from, wherever you are. If you love plants, you are welcome to grow folds. I welcome you to be a plant foldy. Um, it's just amazing, and I'm. I'm just really happy to share these um, plants for you and you can see here this is another type of calathea see i'm not an expert with calatheas but what i will tell you is for 29.99 you will get a 10 inch planter full of this calathea it looks beautiful now but these velvety texture calatheas are quite challenging to grow now what's interesting is here is a large leaf form of a china doll plant at first i didn't think this was a china doll plant but then i double checked it and this one is a china doll plant but look at how large the leaves are i do like china doll plant i was able to buy an exotic angels costa farms china doll plant from heb which is another um texas exclusive grocery store you can only find them in texas because it's a texas type of grocery store that also sells plants but they have some really cheap plants to buy there but um you can see here this was the traditional type of um china doll plant that i'm used to seeing look at how the leaves are smaller i love that the leaves feel very thin but also i feel like this is a plant that could be a vigorous grower the one thing i quickly learned when i say quickly um if you don't um actually water this plant or keep this plant soil moist it will quickly decline in its health some of the leaves would start to brown and crisp up and so this this plant is not necessarily the best plant for me because i have such a busy schedule so a little bit about me i have a and um, i'm a salaried manager and i typically work about 10 hours a day um and you know when you think about filming youtube videos an hour at least an hour each day taking about four hours to edit and then having a full-time um, job, it is a little bit um, challenging. And then on top of that, when you have like 50, 60 plus plants indoors and then a full household of plants outdoors, it is a little bit challenging to maintain plants, especially when it comes to watering. And that's the thing I will say about um, watering your plants. You have to really know your schedule. Um, I will say that I have um, really hurt some of my syngoniums. I've been a very bad plant parent because I've gotten so busy that I wasn't able to like water my syngoniums for like two and a half, three weeks. And they're not like um, pothos plants or Sansevieria plants are a little bit more forgiving when you don't water them and they quickly declined in health. So that's the only thing about plant shopping and plant videos and just taking care of plants. Just know that you have to have the enough time to really invest in them um the, the plant we're looking at right over here is a ficus elastica shivriana beautiful looking one from um, proven winners and then this one is another ficus elastica um by proven winners this one is the chloe version i really like the chloe version because it reminds me of a ficus um, elastica burgundy but the difference is the leaf shape it's a lot rounder and then over here is one of my favorite ficus elastica and this one is for 24.99 by proven winners this is the ficus elastica ruby now with ficus elastica ruby you see how it's got that reddish tone about it you have to give it a lot of light full sun would be even ideal in order for it to keep its beautiful coloration and that's the thing i like about callaways as well is they they merchandise all of their plants to similar care tips this one is another ficus benjamina here by proven winners um ficus benjamina it is one of those um uh, ficus that would be considered an indoor tree the problem is if you don't give it enough bright and direct light again it will quickly drop its leaves so it will sh it, it will definitely tell you when it's not happy and then over here we got a ficus lyrata or fiddle fig, fiddle fig leaf um care tips for that 
If you get one of these, you definitely don't want to move that ficus around. Like find a bright spot in your home, leave it there. Make sure you stay consistent with the watering. What I mean by that is um, you want to make sure that you don't like not water it for like two weeks and then all of a sudden like chug it with water and then not water it for three weeks. If that makes any sense. Ficus in general like to be, um, you know, consistent with where they are placed, the lighting conditions and also the watering. And then over here, I just picked up this plant. I've never actually seen this plant. This is the first time I've ever seen one in real life. Um, this one's a beautiful looking plant. It looks like a ficus, but I love the shiny natural shine on the leaves. Beautiful looking plant as well. And then you can see here, this is a classic ficus elastica or ruby um, um a rubber tree plant this one is the tanniki um, in a six inch planter for 19.99 this one has some really good variegation and the thing about this is i actually have grown a ficus elastica tanniki outdoors in full sun in the summertime where in north dallas um you know we get 100 degree weather and look at this um, beautiful philodendron um, um, burly marks, um, variegated burly marks. This one is for um, $99. It is still a bit pricey, but I would say it's less pricey as compared to maybe three to four years ago when this, you know, a single one leaf, um, one node cutting would cost you about $100. This is a plant that it looks, this one actually has some really good variegation. The only problem is this is one of these variegated plants that can easily revert to you. Even if you don't, if you give it like good, bright, indirect light, it's still a finicky plant when it comes to variegation. I would say Burley Marks um, is not a stable variegated plant. That's just my opinion. I've seen it happen where it's just reverted. Now this is a stable variegated plant. Um, this is for $29.99. This is a ficus triangularis braided form. Really like that a lot. I didn't realize that ficus plants could really be um, fused together to make a thicker trunk. You can see here, these actually lend itself to be more of a bonsai type of um, plant. I bought one of these and actually wired it up, potted it up in a bonsai um, pot and it is doing very well for me. It, it will be interesting to see if I can keep it alive. Um, now with Ficus Elastica Triangularis, it is a finicky plant in a couple of ways. It does require a lot of bright light. Um, the watering conditions, you need to make sure that you're staying consistent. It does prefer a lot higher humidity and it's just a finicky plant. If you're gonna go grow one of these, find a spot that gets all of those, um, t um, you know, environmental, uh, requirements and it should do fine for you they don't like to be moved around a lot and in, as i pan over here we've got some more ficus elastica or not ficus elastica more ficus plants look at the interesting growth form on this and i actually like the leaves now this one is a little bit pricey this one is for 59.99 this is by proven winners right over here and you can see that it's got some very narrow um, leaves um that's a beautiful looking plant i would assume that it would be an easy to um, propagate plant as well and then right over here we've got a ficus audrey i love the velvety texture of the leaves of a ficus audrey and this one is um, called ficus roy and then that one is also for $29.99. So it's a little bit of a pricey ficus. I was able to buy one from Walmart about two years ago, I believe. Same size, but only for $5. And then, you know, over the years, it's grown very large. It's become a tree. I have really um, neglected it, however. And so now it's outside in my back patio. And I eventually want to repot that as well. This one is a ficus celebrate. So that's a macro pie smile. But look at this. I love the shape of the leaves. So this is an uncommon type of ficus plant. So I didn't realize that there was more to ficus plants besides like ficus benjamina, ficus elastica, ficus lyrata. There's so many other ficus. And you can see here what a gorgeous looking ficus plant. Love how the um, the leaves are somewhat narrow, but the, the edges of it are very round. Very beautiful leaf shape. This is actually a beautiful looking plant. It would be very interesting to see how it looks if you were to leaf shine it. And then you can see right here, we've got another ficus, um, Elastica Altissima. So this has got that green on green variegation. And then you can see the price right there. This one has actually be, um, been trained to be more of like a canopy tree form. So what they do is they actually, um, you know, hack the, the top of the, the plant and it, it actually 
encourages more um, shoots to grow up. And so if you prune your ficus elastica or your rubber tree plant, like if you just keep cutting it up, it will um, actually promote more branching to where it becomes more of a tree. So I always like that, you know, and it comes to just how you train your trees and your plants indoors. Uh, pruning really does help a lot. And then over here, um, I love cordyline plants. This one is a cordyline compacta for $16.99. Uh, this one doesn't get very large leaves. I do like the variegation. I like that subtle pink variegation. I would assume that this plant also would have better coloration with more light. Um, I am currently growing my cordyline Hawaiian tea plant in full sun. And um, it was one that I bought at Walmart. I saved a lot of money actually. It was only for $5.84. So that's again, you know, the thing. I love going to different plant shops. Well, I feel like I haven't been going to a lot of different plant shops. It's either like Home Depot, Lowe's, or, um, you know, Kroger for grocery stores or Callaway. So I'm going to try to go to some more local plant nurseries. But you can see right here, this is an Epiprimnum panatum neon. Um, in the Philippines, we call this Tibatib. And this one is on a totem for $169.99. This one is an Epipremnum arium um, golden pothos on a totem. And notice how the leaves got um, a little bit larger. And we're going to pan over here and look at some more plants. Over here, we're going to be delving into some more aglonemas here. You already know I love aglonemas. And for those that don't know what aglonema are, they are also called Chinese evergreens. They come in so many different varieties. Like right over here, we've got another aglonema um, Lady Madonna. What a gorgeous looking aglonema. I love the white stems on that aglonema. And right next to it is a massive Monstera Thai constellation. This one is for $499. This is actually a fairly large Monstera Thai constellation with good variegation. Leaves are large. They're starting to really be fenestrated. And yes, this is only for $499. Not a bad price at all. I would say three to four years ago, this would be in like $1,500 range, maybe $2,000 range or even more. It's just amazing that Monstera Thai constellation has now become... I would say a very easy to find plant. You can go to like a local plant nursery. They have those available. And I will say pricing for this beautiful aeroid. It has um, really plummeted. Now Callaway's does sell them for a little bit more um, um, on the pricier side when it comes to their six inch planters. But for $499 for that type of um, size is not a bad price at all. And then you can see here, this is another Diefenbachia Sublime, or some people call it Sparkle. Beautiful looking, ghostly looking um, Diefenbachia. Again, Diefenbachia, I cannot repeat myself more than um, I um, you know, stress that it's just one of those plants that needs a lot of light. This one is a Philodendron Hope for $16.99. I would say in general, most philodendron will require more bright indirect light. If you can provide them with better humidity, that's um, a plus as well, but not necess necessary for most um, varieties. This one is an Aglonema BJ Friedman, um, beautiful Aglonema. This Aglonema can get very large. It can get really large leaves. I really like the, um, the minty variegation of this particular Aglonema. I love the fact that Aglonemas can tolerate lower light conditions. Um, you want to make sure that their, their soil dries out completely before watering them. They prefer to be more on the drier side, to be honest, because I've noticed that even keeping their soil wet can potentially make them unhealthy um, and can to um, cause root rot. Over here for $16.99 in a six inch planter is a juvenile form of a Monstera um, Deliciosa. So just a green form of a Monstera. That's a really cute looking seedling. It looks like these are all from seeds. This one is also for $16.99. I really like the look of a juvenile form Monstera um, Deliciosa. I love how the, sh um, the leaves uh, are just more of a heart shape. 
honestly i wish that there was a plant that could just remain that heart shaped look besides like a philodendron heteracium but this one right here is for 9.99 in a four inch planter this one is another monstera deliciosa juvenile form what i like about it is for 9.99 um, most of these um plants there is about one two three four five um seedlings here so you could separate this and get five different monstera Thai consolate i mean not Thai consolation that would be awesome for 9.99 no um monstera deliciosas um you can get five of those little seedlings um, for um, just $9.99. That is not a bad price at all. Again, uh, Monstera Deliciosas will get large eventually. Give it about a year or two and you'll have a massive plant. And then over here, we've got some um, Aglonemas. And then this is a beautiful Philanopsis Orchid. Um, you know, you can't go to a, a Grow Folds video without seeing a Aglonema and a Philanopsis Orchid. I try my very best to really showcase plants that I am more um, drawn to. I have made a conscious effort to um, show other plants that I may not necessarily be interested in. I really, really, really want to diversify the types of plants that I show on my plant channel. Um, so I've started to show like more succulent and um, outdoor gardening plants especially since it is spring that is like the peak time to be growing things outdoors but you know my main love for this channel is obviously these um, aeroids or these these um, indoor tropical plants like look at this beautiful variegated um, burly marks philodendron burly marks beautiful looking variegation here um, i will say that this plant doesn't necessarily have the most stable variegation you do want to give it a lot of bright light um, i i don't know if necessarily a bright light really influences the amount of variegation but i will say that it will prevent it from reverting it's still one of those plants that may revert to you in green what i would suggest is if you notice that there's a lot of like green foliage growing and no variegation i would cut the plant back to like maybe shock it into growing some more variegated leaves but you know this is still a bit of a pricey um, plant for me for $99 I would love to have this size of a, a philodendron um, um, variegated philodendron um, um, burly marks it is a beautiful plant I've had this in the past I think I have like two more like survivors in, um, in propagation right now and then over here, we've got some more Monstera Thai Constellations. This is in a six inch planter for $89.99. I do think that, you know, if you're looking for a Monstera Thai Constellation at this size, I know that Walmart has been releasing um, those in larger planters for a little bit less. So it really just depends. If you really want to get a beautiful Monstera Thai Constellation, number one, I would say look at the variegation, not because not every single Monstera Thai Constellation is as variegated. And that's a really cool look looking leaf it just has that one hole on it but um you might be able to find more variegated monster tie constellations there are different varieties they have like a monster tie constellation creme brulee which is really um variegated but I always think that plants that have too much variegation are more of like a liability. What I mean by liability is their um, leaves are hard to keep um, healthy because they tend to crisp up and they're a slower growing plant. Like this one right here, I do want to eventually get is a philodendron um, summer glory. I love the... Um, the satin shine on the leaves it's absolutely stunning and this one is only for $19.99 I honestly should have bought this particular philodendron but for me I have um, realized that I have a bad plant obsession and what I mean by that is like I have been just buying plants left and right um, it doesn't help that I do these plant shopping videos and I always tell myself every time I go to like Callaway's or a big box store like Walmart Lowe's or Home Depot that I'm just gonna film plants and then all of a sudden I'll have like a plant find or a plant that just really speaks to me so plant foldies or anybody watching this video please leave in the comments if you have that same boat where you definitely have like a plant obsession a plant addiction and you can't help yourself but buy plants knowing that you may not necessarily have all of the um the care conditions that the plant requires um i really love hearing from you guys um engagement is very important to me you know uh, send me a message on instagram leave comments on my youtube channel and if you are watching this in the live premiere chat um, don't be shy to say hello. Um, we have a very kind and positive um, plant community on Growfold, and we always love to see new faces. And um, I did, you know, want to show you all of those beautiful Philanopsis orchids. So the smaller ones are for $14.99. Um, I have a variegated leaf 
on one of my um, Philanopsis orchids that I found at a grocery store called um, Kroger for $9.99. So again, what's exciting about plant shopping and in just doing plant shopping videos even for you guys is whenever i find plants i'm able to direct people to you know different types of stores to be able to find maybe some wish list plants or plants that are going to save you some money i'm all about trying to save people money and giving you guys the best pricing now these are some beautiful rex begonias um for $16.99 they are larger in size so if you ever go to a big box store Costa Farms typically has you know exotic angel rex begonias for like $5.89 sometimes $4.97 at Walmart and I do like rex begonias because they have so much like coloration the rex begonias are a little bit um challenging of a plant though for a newbie I would say I wouldn't start out with a rex begonia because they do like humidity they do like their soil to dry dry out completely and then you can bottom water them I would definitely not get their leaves wet and definitely not get their stems wet because it will rot away if you do that so just you know something to learn about like rex begonias you want to bottom water them and what that means is you're going to take a saucer fill it up with water and then stick the um the planter in it to let it soak up the water versus like watering the top where there is a potential of getting the leaves wet you really don't want to get the leaves wet on rex begonias rex begonias because they will rot away and i've seen it happen in my experience now for my hoya heads or hoya lovers check this out look at these hoya publicaics and you see how their um their vines have like twisted and now they have become like friends all three of them have just kind of twisted itself that is really interesting um, i don't know so much about hoya but what i do know about hoya is they have some beautiful blooms their blooms are very fragrant and i love the speckling of this um hoya publicaics what a gorgeous looking ho hoya and this is just really interesting that they have kind of shot up some vines and they have twisted around and now they're all stuck together that's very interesting it'd be interesting to see if somebody wanted to buy these plants like what that would look like in terms of untangling them and they are in a beautiful trellis um i have two hoyas so far i've got a hoya carnosa crimson queen and a hoya carnosa crimson princess both are hanging baskets from costa farms that i bought at walmart for 2084 it's a really good price because i have noticed that hoyas can be a little bit pricey this one in a six inch planter is for $29.99. This is a Hoya Yetii or a Hoya um, Kintiana. It's beautiful. And you can see that the leaves are a little bit pink, which means that this um, Hoya has gotten a lot of light and has become a little bit more sun stressed. It is nice to get your Hoyas to be sun stressed. So feel free to be more um, um, just to flood them with a lot of light is what I'm trying to say. If you flood them with a lot of light, even direct sun, they will be sun stressed, which means they will give you better variegation and coloration. Like, look at that. And then this is a gorgeous looking um, Hoya by Proven Winners. Really nice looking one. This one is a Hoya pot of gold for $24.99 in a five inch planter. Really nice looking Hoya. And what I've noticed about Hoya is you would think that a waxy type plant would be actually a slower grower, but it's actually done very well for me in terms of just pushing out new growth. They do um, do well in terms of propagation. You can propagate them in water and they will root. Um, I am in the hunt for a Hoya Chelsea. I saw a couple of Hoya Chelsea, for instance, at Walmart, but I just didn't buy it at the time. And then when I came back to look for it, it was gone. And over here, we've got some Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, I believe. Crimson Queen is basically the white edging is actually on the, the borders of the leaf. And you can see we've got just a green Hoya Carnosa. I don't know a lot about Hoyas, so just bear with me. But I am attempting to try to get you guys more Hoya content. And then here is a beautiful hanging basket again of Hoya Yetii, or some people call it Hoya Kintiana. Beautiful looking Hoya. This is um, for $39.99 in a hanging basket. You can see that it's slightly sun stressed because it's even got leaves that are almost black. Really nice looking Hoya. I would love to see a Hoya in bloom. I was able to see some at PlantCon 2024 in Houston not too long ago. And for those that haven't gotten a chance to watch my PlantCon 2024, 
um, video, please check it out in my channel. I have playlists with a lot of these plant shopping videos. That would be something that if you wanted to binge my, my, uh, my plant shopping videos, I would love that. But as you can see right over here, I have just shown you guys a lot of these like um, proven winner Hoyas. This one is proven winner Hoya Sea Stones Hoya. These are for $9.99 and that's not actually a bad price at all for a starter Hoya. Some Hoyas are a lot more pricey and you know, I'm actually thinking about getting some proven winner um, Hoyas. Like this one is really variegated and this one also is for $9.99. These are the Hoya Sea Stones beautiful looking hoya love the variegation and the coloration i believe that you would get some pinks if you give it a lot of light and then over here is um, for 19.99 a hoya compacta so for kathy who is one of my most loyal plant foldies viewer subscribers i know you like some hoya compactas here's some more hoya compactas for you i do think that the pricing for 19.99 is a little bit pricey um, I've seen some of these Hoya compactas actually being sold in some Austin, Texas local nurseries there for a lot less. So that is another um, plant that I would like to get. The only thing is I'm a little bit weary about Hoya compacta because I've had mealy bug infestations before and mealy bugs are tough to get rid of. I just think that they would be hiding in those crevices of a Hoya compacta. But you can see here for $9.99, um, which I believe is a plant saver if you're wanting to get a Hoya Yetii, um by Proven Winners. That's not a bad price at all, especially if you want to start out with a smaller Hoya. Again, Hoyas are easy to propagate. They are, I would say, moderate growers. They're not necessarily vigorous growers, but they are not very, they're, from, in my um, experience, they're not slow growers either. And then over here, we got a Peperomia Ginny for $6.99 in a four inch planter. Really like the simplicity of this um, particular Peperomia. It definitely gives me like succulent vibes because when you touch the leaves, they're a very waxy, thick um, texture about it. And then we, over here, we've got even more um, Peperomias by um, cost, not Costa Farms, um, Proven Winners. The, they've got the green form and also the variegated form. And then over here, we've got this beautiful looking hanging basket. I'm going to assume for $12.99 that this is some form of a Swedish ivy. I love my white edge Swedish ivy. It has um, grown very fast and it's easy to propagate as well. They kind of remind me of like coleus plants, honestly, where you can just take cuttings and it will root within like a week and a half to two weeks and you get more free plants. And that's the thing about plant shopping. Sometimes you can go plant shopping and pick up a beautiful plant like this. This is a Peperomia sweet and sour where you can get a mother plant or you can get plants for free from other friends by like sharing like cuttings or you know propagations. That's what I'm really trying to do. So I've been propagating a bunch of like coleus cuttings in the hopes of getting them to root and sharing them with maybe some of my viewers and subscribers in the local um, DFW area or maybe even selling them so there's a lot to do with that and that's part of the reason why I like to grow plants not necessarily just for like the beautiful variegation like this one right here is actually interesting so notice that this one has actual pink outlining as compared to the other Peperomia obtusifolia so I don't know if this particular Peperomia actually sun stresses but again what I was getting back to is it's just nice to be able to grow plants and share plants with friends um, this one is a uh, Dr Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta for $16.99. One of the most easiest plants to grow. It is a moderate grower, so it's not a fast grower, but it's not a slow grower either. But this is a plant that you can literally put in a dark corner, corner of your home and um, neglect it and it will still um, grow. This is another form of that Dracaena Janet C um, Craig Compacta. Um, really like Dracaenas. I am guilty of not having enough Dracaenas in my plant collection. You know, I talk about Dracaenas being such an underrated plant, um, but I really hope I can influence you guys to get like uh, Aglonemas Dracaenas um, in your plant collection because I'm telling you they are super easy. And then right over here for $39.99 is an Epipremnum Panatum Neon. Um, this is another um, type of Epipremnum Panatum. I know some people really like the Albo version and maybe the Indonesian mint version, but this version is really nice as well. Again, 
Growing it up on like a moss pole or a totem pole will really give you some really large foliage leaves. And as I pan over here, look at all of these Boston ferns that they have. They've got that Monstera Thai constellation and just several plants to look at over here. Right over here is a gorgeous looking um, mini lipstick plant here for $29.99. Look at that. They remind me of a Hoya. Really like this a lot. They look like goldfish plants as well. Um, I like the natural shine on the leaves as well as just um, the waxy texture of the leaves. Um, I don't have any lipstick plants in my collection, so please let me know what the care tips are in the comments if you have one. And then here are some Cryptanthus. Um, beautiful looking plants here. Again, these remind me of like colorful Sansevieria plants. Um, obviously, they're different plants, but look at that beautiful pink um, border. Really like that a lot. I don't know a lot about this particular plant as well. So, you know, again, I love learning from you guys um, that also love plants. So leave that in the comments if you have any care tips. And over here, we've got some more Philanopsis orchids. And I swear every time I see a Philanopsis orchid, there's just so many different colors and varieties. And over here, one of my favorite trade scanthias. This is a trade scanthia nanuk in a four inch planter for $9.99. I have one that's doing very well. I was able to cut it up and actually get more propagations. And we've got some polka dot plants here for $5.99 in a four inch planter. I steer away from polka dot plants because they just haven't done very well for me. Like if I overwater them, they crisp up. If I underwater them, if they crisp up, I haven't really, you know, figured out what the, the like the lighting conditions are and I've killed several of them. And it's one of those plants that I don't love enough to try to keep growing. Now, when it comes to a Hedera helix or an English Ivy, that's a plant that I would um, continue to try and grow indoors. Um, I just killed, um, Hedera Helix number 14 and it makes me sad but it's one of those things where it's just the plant care and just the amount of um time you have you know you can't just pick up a beautiful plant like that bromeliad and expect to just let it grow without watering it and actually giving it care over here we've got a foxtail cactus this is a super cute looking cactus in a hanging basket. And so for those that love cactus and succulents, um, be prepared for me to feature even more cactus. I may do like a full shopping video where I just specifically feature a certain type of genus of plants. I know that you've asked for some like um, basic care tips for plants or plants that are good for be beginners. So stay tuned for that episode. I did film that today and I will be editing it and hopefully debuting it either on Sunday or Monday. But you can see here, um, more bromeliads. Happy to have uh, uh, my, one of my first bromeliads, although I love that one right here that we're looking at that red and then the pink coloration of bromeliads. Um, again, I don't know too much about bromeliads, so I've got to do my own personal research. Um, to see if I can get my bromeliad to grow. Um, it was more of an impulse buy because I got that bromeliad for $2.45. It was on a reduced clearance price at Kroger, um, which is a grocery store out in North Dallas. And that's the thing, I buy my plants, not necessarily at all big box stores or even Callaway's, but I will say the majority of my plants I typically buy from Callaway's just because I do trust that their plants are healthy. They've got a good return policy, that a diversity of plants and I featured this video, you know, this particular Callaway's um, nursery in several of my videos. So hopefully you guys haven't gotten tired of looking at all of these plants because they just have so many to look at. Like this is a bromeliad that I bought for $2.49. Obviously it's not this size, but this one is for $24.99. I'm just really interested to see the full potential of um, being able to grow this plant. Um, I again, don't know so much about bromeliads, but what I do know about bromeliads is they are absolutely stunning. They have different varieties of bromeliads. I would say, assume that they would also thrive in bright indirect light. I'm not really sure if they can tolerate lower light conditions. And then over here, I keep panning over this beautiful Monstera Thai constellation for $499. So if you are in the um, North Dallas area or want to travel for the Monstera Thai constellation, definitely check out the Callaways off of um, Custer Road right next to Highway 121. You will um, see all of these beautiful plants. I highly recommend going to this, this nursery, honestly, because you'll find Anthuriums like this for $59.99 in a crate 
basket i really like that a lot i don't have any anthuriums like this in my collection i have blooming anthuriums but when it comes to all of these beautiful um vein um, vein um type anthuriums i don't have it i did give one to my grandmother and she was able to let it thrive i eventually would like to get that anthurium back from her just because she's a better plant um grower than me you know a lot of my plant love my plant knowledge is literally um you know from my grandmother she's very near and dear to me and i'm just glad that um she is 89 years old super healthy she loves her plants very alert and i do believe that plants have a very good way of making people happy it's really good for your mental health um me making these plant videos and literally seeing plants like this beautiful aglonema lady madonna um really help with just my mood i think that i'm a lot happier i'm a lot calmer um I, i'm a lot more excited when it comes to just sharing you know the plants that i'm finding in my videos and then just being able to like freely talk about plants with you guys i know that i have um really talked about the same plants daily um but it's fun to just really show these on film like this one right here is a rapist palm really like this palm and what's really interesting about this particular palm is it gets very large and the plus side is it doesn't necessarily need as much highlight as compared to a lot of the other palms and then now we're gonna walk over to the fern section here um, I have been debating on whether I should get a bird's nest fern. This one is for $24.99. What a gorgeous looking bird's nest fern. I am looking for one that is a hurricane version where it's like um, spinning around. But this one is for $24.99. And you can see that there is a different type of var um, variation in the leaf shape and even the texture. These um, bird's nest fern can get fairly large. So that's another reason why I have been a little bit more apprehensive about buying a bird's nest fern just because while you may have say the care tips and the time to invest in the plant we also want to look at the space you have in your home like how much space do you have for a plant so it's like some people are quick to buy say a monstera deliciosa in a juvenile form but give it about three to four years and it's going to really take over a large chunk of your room um, and that's the thing about my house i've got a fairly large house super excited i bought it um, when it was actually a really good price. Now housing prices have got really large, um, you know, really expensive. Um, I'm never going to sell my house. Well, I wouldn't say never, but it is a very comfortable house and I've been able to like house a lot of my plants. But, you know, I digress and say that now that I have learned a lot about just plants and the limits you have in terms of how many plants do you want to um, place in your house um i know that i have you know you know ocd when it comes to just wanting to buy plants those compulsions of like oh i have to get everything now it becomes more of how much space do you have in your home how much time do you really invest in your plants and i keep repeating myself because i've actually interacted with several plant foldies and they're always asking me questions about they can't keep up with their plants what do you do with it i would say if a plant isn't giving you joy either donate it to somebody or compost it and that's the polite way of saying maybe just trash it i really don't um encourage that but at the same time downsizing your plant to really make room and um, time for the ones that you really want to take care of really will give you the best joy um, you know i have rambled a little bit off topic but as you can see here these fetonias are from proven winners and i do like these fetonias because they have their own different hybrid notice this fetonia this is the nightly fetonia by leaf joy littles proven winners these are for 9.99 um really like this one because it's got smaller um leaves for a fetonia and then the other one if you saw earlier has a different color it's not necessarily white it's got more of like a neon green color and i do like the look of this particular fetonia i don't have fetonias but what i will say about fetonias is they do require a little bit better um humidity so these are plants that would actually do well in more of a terrarium setting setting um i have clear um lamps that i bought from target that i have converted into a terrarium so i may post that on my instagram so there's a lot of um, other content that i put out um, aside from my youtube channel i've been using um instagram but plant foldies i know i asked this in a previous live chat do you think i should create a facebook 
page just for the plant foldies? Would that make it easier for people to share their plants, interact? Because I know that a lot of you guys really look forward to just chatting with each other at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time when I premiere my live videos. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make a, um, a Facebook account for um, Grow Folds. And then over here is the... Um, the bird's nest fern that I am considering, this is the bird's nest fern hurricane. Notice how the leaves have kind of like spun around. They're crinkly. They've just got a different look about it and texture. And I really think that's super cool. Now that is for $19.99 at Callaway's Nursery. I haven't really seen them out in big box stores. And you can see here for $16.99, we've got a staghorn fern. I have yet to mount a staghorn fern on a wooden plank. I really want to do that. I want to put it on my wall. It would be another way of like saving space in terms of like maximizing your space for plants. So um, another way to maximize space for your plants is having a bunch of hanging baskets. Just make sure that you have the correct hook for that. I did find some hooks that can carry up to 30 pounds um, off of Amazon. It's more of like a command strip hook and some people get nervous about that. But trust me, some of my Hoyas that I've been growing in a hanging basket are being hung by the um, command strips. And then over here, we've got some assorted um, alocasias. That is alocasia tiny dancer. We've got some alocasia low, low riders here for um, $14.99 in a four inch planter. Really like the stems of the leaves. They've got some texture and some color about it. And look at the, um, the leaves as well. It's amazing to see um, the different types of alocasia. I would say about three to four years ago, I wouldn't um, think that there were so many varieties out of alocasia, but they do have several varieties. Um, I do love syngoniums. It's one of my favorite plants. I talk about that in all of my videos. This one's for $6.99. Syngoniums are easy, but the thing about syngoniums is they're not really tolerant with lower light conditions. So bright indirect light. Otherwise, they will get very leggy. They're going to shoot out more runners than foliage if you give it lower light conditions. And the number one thing I learned about growing syngoniums is if you let their soil dry out for a while, they're not as forgiving of a plant as you would think because they would start to get susceptible to like spider mites their leaves um fall off and it's just not a good thing in terms of just letting or, and neglecting syngoniums syngoniums are not as easy of a care plant when it comes to that obviously if you're gonna neglect the plant and not water it obviously it's gonna be more susceptible to pests because pests plant pests um, attack plants that are not at their best health and then over here, we've got a Calathea medallion, beautiful Calathea. Now with Calatheas, they are one of the most finicky plants, one of the more challenging indoor house plants. Now this one here is for $39.99 in a 10 inch um, diameter planter. Love that purple tone underneath its leaves, but Calatheas require higher humidity levels consistent watering. So what I've done now is um, I've taken some of my calatheas, got rid of the soil, like cleaned it out with a hose and just left it bare root, stuck it in a bowl full of water. And now I'm growing in them in what you call a hydroponic situation where you're not using any type of substrate, but water. It's done very well for me. I, I really think that growing certain plants in hydroponics, especially for somebody like me who does not water um, plants consistently, like I tend to like, and it's really bad, I'll tell you this, I will tend to not water plants for at least two to three weeks. I push the envelope on some of them, and that's the reason why I've done well with like growing plants like Aglonema that don't, don't necessarily require a lot of water, or better yet, let's just phrase it and say that they're more forgiving. But plants like um, certain Syngoniums, for instance, that need water, um, coleus plants that need water, those are the plants that I'm a little bit more worried about. And then over here, I love crotons. This is so interesting. This is a croton magnificent in a tree form. So notice how they've um, let it grow up and look at the leaves. I love the blackness of all of the croton leaves. And this is a croton that I bought actually at Home Depot, a small one for $9.99. And it has gotten so much growth just being outside in full sun. Now, here are some of these easy to care for plants, Sansevieria or snake plants. What makes them easy is, in, um, is, is basically they are a lower light tolerant type plant. This one is for $16.99. I love um, the look of this one because this is the Sansevieria canary. So it's got a lot of yellow variegation to it. The only thing about these uh, 
Sansevieria. These are Sansevieria trifasciatas. Are if you um, overwater it, it definitely will rot. But if you also don't water it enough, it would get what you call dry rot. So it's a little bit more of a finicky plant than you think. Most people will um, market a Sansevieria as an easy to care for plant, and I do agree it is. But there is a little bit more care than you think. And over here, we're looking at a heart fern for $16.99. So this looks beautiful, but based on what you have told me or a lot of the, my viewers and subscribers, the heart fern is actually a very challenging plant to grow. So I'm gonna steer away from that as much as I like the look of it. And you can see this is a beautiful looking um, fern as well. This fern is a footed fern for $16.99. That is not a bad price at all, actually. And that's the thing certain plants are a little bit more pricey than others but just because a plant is um, inexpensive it doesn't make it any less of a plant um, right over here is a six inch uh, planter of a bird's nest sansevieria snake plant for $16.99 these are really cute as well and what I like about these sansevieria is they shoot up pups and what I mean about they shoot up pups is that they have these little babies that pop out of the soil and you can actually separate them. I would say separation is the best way to um, propagate a um, Sansevieria or a snake plant. And then here's another favorite of mine. This is a um, Sansevieria la rubia beautiful looking one as well um this one has some really good variegation look at how um yellow it is really nice color to it and then we have some large um sans not sans very um raven zz's and regular zz plants these are the true easy to care for plant they can tolerate being neglected we are about to approach a beautiful philodendron heteraceum, just a green form here. This one is for $29.99. Look at that heart-shaped leaf on, um, that it has, beautiful green. And that's the thing. I know we're always looking for variegated plants. I can sometimes say that I'm a variegation uh, snoo um, snoot. Like I tend to like plants that are more variegated, but I also have a high appreciation when it comes to just green plants. And then I wanted to show you these um, bonsai pots. These are for $9.99. So that one is for $4.99, but these pots could actually make really good pots for like um, succulent type arrangements in addition to bonsai. I have bought a lot of my bonsai pots actually from Callaway's. They have a really good value for it. And I love the fact that they have all of these different types of planters. And then over here on a trellis is another Hoya. This is a Hoya Publicaix. Um, it's looking very healthy. Love the splash on its leaves. Um, I can see why some people are really about the Hoyas. When I went to PlantCon 2024, saw a bunch of really cool looking Hoyas. I will say they are pricey. And so you're not gonna be finding, you know, these types of pricing for Hoyas like these Epipremnum Aria Marble Queen Pothos, for instance. This one is for $16.99 in a six inch planter. Beautiful variegation. Now with Marble Queen, it doesn't have the most stable variegation. You want to give it a lot of bright indirect light, um, leave it near a window. The more bright indirect light you get it, the better off the coloration is going to be. That's the same thing with like a neon pothos right there. That is one of my favorite pothos. Actually, pothos plants are one of my favorites just because they're easy to care for. Alongside with the Philodendron Heteraceum Brazil, this one is for $16.99 and thank you to the plant foldy that let me know that um you know philodendron heteraceum brazil um you can get lighter or higher variegation based on the amount of light you give it you can see here this one has got a little bit more green form as compared to the others i was at another callaways and i noticed that it was like mostly yellow but i think it's because of the um the lighting conditions you provide it the more light you give a philodendron heteraceum brazil the more yellow or more variegation it's going to push out so that's always an interesting tidbit and that's the reason and why it is so much fun to see you guys on the live premiere chats um, I hope that we continue to keep that engagement you know we are now at 9,200 subscribers thank you to all of the 
original um, plant foldies that continue to tune in my live premieres, but also for those that have recently joined our community. I welcome you guys. Um, everybody is welcome and thank you. I'm also open for feedback. Please make sure you are leaving that in the comments politely. I'm all about positivity as well. The internet can become toxic. We don't want that in our um, environment. I want this to be a safe space for people to really enjoy plants and just to discuss them. And then over here, what I find is interesting, this is actually um, kind of pricey though. It's for um, $49.99. This is, oh, actually, no, no, this is actually for $29.99. That's an Epipremnum Arium Golden Pothos. The next hanging basket um, is a Neon Pothos. I was, I thought it was the Epipremnum Panatum Neon, um, but that's not it. I'm looking at just the Arium version. So the, just the regular Pothos, the Neon Pothos is beautiful. I have a nice looking hanging basket from Costa Farms, but this is the one for $49.99. This is an Epipremnum Panatum. Um, variegated neon um, $49.99 it, it is trailing it is a vigorous grower just like the other epipremnum arium but this one honestly has better um, look when, like a better look when you let it grow up a totem pole or moss pole as compared to a hanging basket the leaves get smaller and smaller as it trails down and you can see here we've got some skin dapsis. so these are actually labeled skin dapsis satin but um silver satin but i really think they're exotica because the leaves are larger and you can see here this one's for $6.99 in a four inch planter really like that a lot i've actually bought this particular um you know philodendron heteracium because it is such a good price and Local plant nurseries like Callaway's will provide you with some really cost-effective pricing. I feel like you would save some money buying from Callaway's and encourage anybody in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to shop Callaway's. And you can see right here, this is um, a, a Midrium Silver um, Medium or a Midrium Medium Silver, however you want to um, say. Let's take a look at that. This is an Amidria medium silver for $39.99. Beautiful looking plant, but the only thing is in order for it to have that beautiful fenestration in larger leaves, it has to grow up a pole. If it doesn't, it will actually not fenestrate and it'll have much smaller leaves. And it over here is a Philodendron Goldie Eye um, for $19.99. This one kind of reminds me of a Syngonium. Just the, the, the trilobes are really nice. I do like that natural leaf shine as well. And that's the interesting thing about plants. Certain plants lend itself to having a natural shine to its leaves while others are a little bit more matte or satiny. Um, this one right here is a philodendron orange marmalade. I'm actually interested in purchasing one of these philodendron by proven winners. It's a beautiful yellow coloration. And this one for $19.99 is also a philodendron um, summer glory. I would go with the other ones that they recently restocked. This one looks like an older one and it's a smaller one. It's got smaller leaves. We've got some metallic leaves um, right over here for $24.99. This is a philodendron um, brantianum. Really like philodendron brantianum, but I think the best way to grow a philodendron brantianum would be to let it grow up a totem pole. If you go to Plant Keeper Incorporated, which is a local plant a nursery out in Dallas, Texas, you will see what I mean. They have large plants with um, philodendron um, brantianum growing up a totem. And you can see here these um, philodendron ring of fires are not nearly as variegated as the ones that we're seeing at big box stores like walmart offered by growers bench but those are for $19.99 and as i pan over look at all of the plants they have at callaways and now we're going to be looking at the outdoor section where we're going to see several flowering plants annual plants cut ground cover plants and just plants in general i wanted to just kind of walk through here and show you guys this look at this sea of wax begonias look at all of the beautiful blooms here these are for 2.99 several of these plants here and i just love looking at all of the outdoor greenery all of the flowers and this is just beautiful so with wax begonias this one is for 6.99 what i like about wax begonias is obviously the blooms are beautiful but they can um, are a little bit more versatile when it comes to lighting conditions so obviously if you give it a lot of light some of them can take um, full sun like the wax begonia can take full sun it will be more vigorous in its growth but you can also grow them in shade which also lends me to believe that you can grow them long term indoors so i'm going to try to see if i can grow those indoors especially over the winter and as i walk over here i'm just going to walk over to coleus plants um, I will say coleus plants are my favorite plants to grow at the moment. 
Um, they are my current plant obsession. And the reason being is look at how beautiful the colors are on this. And these coleus, um, this coleus is only for $2.49 to get a starter. Um, my grandmother was able to buy several um, coleus plants one year um with this size she was able to get them large able to propagate them and then all of a sudden her whole back patio was full of largely large coleus plants and because coleus plants are just very easy to propagate like literally i could just nip a piece of this um coleus plant right now put it in water and then like a week and a half later it will have roots or better yet you can literally take cuttings of a coleus plant stick it in soil and you have propagated it like the the success rate for them to actually root is a lot higher than most plants. I would say coleus plants even root easier as compared to even like golden pothos and pothos plants are so easy to root in water. I am currently rooting tons of coleus plants because I was able to grow some out pretty large and I cut it up and I love the process of propagating. Propagating plants for me um, is the fun part of growing plants. That's one um, part of um, plant growing that really inspire me to keep um, growing plants and you can see coleus plants here these are the kong coleus plants so kong coleus plants have very large leaves um, i'm not sure if i really want to get kong coleus plants i prefer them to to be a little bit smaller in the leaf shape it is a beautiful looking kong coleus plant um, this one is for 12.99 and um, i am just really happy that Callaway's has so many different varieties of coleus. Like, look at this one right here. Now, this one is for $34.99, but obviously it's in a large um, planter. I wouldn't even need to buy a plant this large. Like, literally, if I just had, like, one little cutting of this, I could grow it up in about three weeks to that size because coleus plants are very vigorous growers. They're very fast growers. I recently bought this coleus right here. Um, I like it because of the dark foliage. And then you can see that there's like pink veining there. Notice how some of the lower leaves are a little bit more green. So the coloration of certain coleus um, have better coloration if you're giving them bright indirect light. Some coleus plants can actually take a full sun. So that's what you call sun coleus. And you can see here, we've just passed by a bunch of ground cover. Now this is a beautiful trade scanthia. This is a trade scanthia velvet that I bought. I will start to chop it up and actually propagate it to make it more of a full plant. And this is what, um, uh, one of my favorite plants. This is a Swedish ivy. You can grow Swedish ivy indoors as well. And this is a very fast growing plant. You can actually take cuttings from these and these easily root in water. And you can see they have the neon version of a Swedish ivy. This is better than a Hedera helix or an English ivy in a sense that it is a very fast grower. It's a very easy plant, not very finicky. And for the price of $2.49, that's not a bad starter plant at all. I bought a um, uh, Swedish ivy that was called Swedish ivy white edge. And after a month, it's as, it's really blown up. I only spent $3.99. So it's always nice to start out with plants that are starter plants. Some of us may want larger plants for that instant gratification. And I totally understand that. But if you are really into plants and you're into a budget, for me, I like to start plants from when they're small and then watch them grow. I think that's the beauty of actually getting a plant. So for instance, if you bought a Monstera Thai Constellation in a small form, wait two to three years and you'll have a massive plant. And I wanna show you this. This is another coleus plant that I recently bought as well. Look at how the leaves look. That yellow edging on the leaves is gorgeous. And then here is another um, coleus plant as well. This one can take full sun. I have this coleus plant as well. So as you notice, every single coleus plant that is being offered by Callaways, except this one, I have yet to buy this coleus plant. I have pretty much purchased. Um, now I'm in the current state of um, propagating the ones I have because they've grown up so fast. This is a beautiful and interesting plant. This one actually reminds me of a ghost because this is, um, it's just got that white leaf here. And if you touch it, it literally feels like leather. It's got a very soft velvety touch about it. I don't know a lot about this plant, but it does have a beautiful look. 
Um, I don't know if this can actually grow indoors. So plant foldies, leave in the comments and the care tips for this particular plant. You know, we have been seeing a haunting. Um, there is, um, Kroger is actually haunted with ghosts. As you can already tell in the last video that I premiered about two days ago, we saw a bunch of ghosts. So please make sure that you are staying till the very end. I know that I'm showing you guys Callaway's Nursery. It's not necessarily a big box store, but for me, it just is one of those plant nurseries that I want to continue to um, feature in my YouTube videos because of look at these like they have this right here this is a fats and japonica spiders web so fats and japonica I am actually going to try to grow one indoors I got the the camouflage version which is what I'm about to approach this one has that green on green variegation now with fats and japonica or Japanese Aurelia they like more acidic soil they prefer to be in the shade they really don't want to be in full sun otherwise their leaves will burn but it is another plant that that, um, is very good for a Japanese garden. I mean, notice that it is called Jap you know, Japanese Aurelia for that reason. And as I walk over here, this is a beautiful star jasmine. And I wish you guys could smell the blooms. These are absolutely fragrant. This is on a trellis right over here, and it is a very prolific bloomer. Now, I prefer the um, Arabian jasmine. Um, where I'm from in the Philippines, that's our national flower. It's called the Sampaguita or um, um, Arabic jasmine. If you drink loose leaf tea, jasmine tea actually uses the jasmine flowers to infuse it with that um, fragrant smell. And then if you walk over here, I like to show you guys Japanese maples. So Japanese maples are also called Acer palmatum um, because the leaves look like palms. Now, Acer palmatum, there's several different types of cultivars. So you can't necessarily grow a Japanese maple from seed um, to get those certain characteristics. Like if you were to take a seed from a Japanese maple, it would not be guaranteed to have like a red type of foliage. So that's really where the name cultivar is. It's literally being able to take a specific mutation of a plant or a specific um, variety or characteristic of a plant and um, propagating it either through grafting, which is what these Japanese maples are. Like this one is a massive Shishigashira um, Japanese maple or lion head maple. That price is pretty pricey though, $2,999. Totally get it though, because Japanese maples, it would take at least 10 years for a plant to get that large. That's the only drawback about Japanese maples is they are a slower growing plant. In North Dallas, they are a little bit more challenging because they don't really tolerate very hot conditions. They prefer to be in more shaded conditions. Now in certain growing, um, environments like Oregon or the Pacific Northwest, these can grow out in full sun and they're just, um, they will do fine. But as you guys can see, I have kind of circled around Callaway's Nursery. This is a massive nursery, and I really hope and invite everybody to go to this particular nursery. If you are in the Plano, Frisco, McKinney area, this is again off of Highway 121, right off of Custer Road in Pl um, Plano, Texas. But I do want to end this with the beautiful potato vine right over here. And then we're just going to do one more lap around this um, Callaway's Nursery. Again, plan full these. Leave in the comments what plants you guys want to see specifically. I can do a little bit more of a feature for that. And now we're going to go plant shopping at night. So it is kind of creepy going into a Kroger, um, Kroger grocery store. I actually filmed this about two days ago. So I did some day shopping because um, a plant foldy did tell me that Kroger was haunted and it kind of freaked me out. So I decided that I would go during the day and then I found a bunch of ghosts during the day. So now I'm gonna go into this Kroger, which is off of Coit and Campbell Road in um, Plano, Texas. Again, right off of Highway 121. This Kroger is literally five minutes away from the Callaway's Nursery, but you know, Kroger is a grocery store and you would never really think to go shop at a grocery store for plants. But I will tell you, Kroger and HEB have been bringing in plants that are a little bit more rare and uncommon for very cost effective prices. And that's the thing about um, grocery stores or just going plant shopping in general. You've really got to canvas all of the different um, places that you're going to go shopping for. So um, there's really nobody shopping here. I believe I was in here 
um, late at night. Um, Kroger closes at 1 a.m. So it makes it easy for me to plan shop late at night. I like to film late at night because there's not as many people shopping. It's easy for me to freely film. That way, like the, the workers don't think I'm crazy, you know, going around and filming because I want to be respectful, obviously, with people's privacy. And I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable when it comes to just getting on film. Um, but anyways, as you can see, every time I go to um, Kroger's, I like to look at the floral area. So you can see here, they've got some tulips here. They've got some chrysanthemums, some um, daffodils, some mums. They've got some hyacinths and they've got my favorite um, azalea simpsii or indoor azalea. We'll go back to that. But every time you go to a grocery store all of their plants are typically in the floral section because they consider the plants floral and you can see here we've got a beautiful chrysanthemum we've got a hedera helix or english ivy and then you can see here more tulips more flowers what a gorgeous looking mum or chrysanthemum here this one is only for 9.99 really like that a lot and the thing about mums are is I didn't realize that they were perennial. So you can literally plant this down in a land, you know, in a landscape. Like my growing zone is 8A. So this would actually be a perennial that will grow, bloom, and then die off in the winter. And then when it gets um, warm in the spring, summer, it will just reemerge with more bloom. So that's really cool in terms of like chrysanthemums. In Japan, they actually have um, chrysanthemum um, festivals. It's another thing where like the Japanese really hybridize chrysanthemums. In Japan, they call them kiku, and it's really interesting. So I hope you guys will actually do some research and check out um, uh, chrysanthemums. It's just interesting how certain cultures really um, patronize certain plants. And I didn't realize that the common mum that's over here in the United States is such a um, hybridized plant in Japan. Same thing with the zellias. And then over here, we can go and look at all of these beautiful Philanopsis orchids. I'm just going to pan over and show you, you know, the different types of Philanopsis orchids. Now, for those that have never grown Philanopsis orchids, I will say Philanopsis orchids need to be on the drier side in terms of their substrate. You never want to plant them in soil. That is not a good idea. Now, the best um, substrate to grow Philanopsis orchids, especially if you're going to repot one of these, is to grow them in orchid bark. Orchid bark with some charcoal as well is a really good thing because charcoal is a good cleaning purif purification um, substrate that you can put in your plants. I like to mix orchid bark in my um, aeroid mix or my um, indoor potting mix. I use um, a lot of perlite, a cactus type succulent um, potting mix and some aeroid um, you know, substrate like um, orchid bark. So like, yeah, I like to mix orchid bark as well, but you can see here, lots of Philanopsis orchids. There's just a plethora of them. I love the white uh, Philanopsis orchids. I find them very elegant looking. And it's one that I haven't added a lot of orchids to my collection just because I don't really like long term I, I i think the blooms are beautiful but they only last for about a month and it takes a while for them to rebloom so i bought a variegated philanopsis orchid just because i feel like there's some leaf interest that will happen even after the bloom and i've been checking this out so this is a beautiful shiflera again this is for 19.99 um while i i think for a six inch planter that's a little bit more pricey for the health of, and the look of this particular shiflera i wouldn't mind spending that money obviously I'm not going to buy that today, but it is a beautiful looking plant. And I will always show you guys an Epipremnum Arium or a Golden Pothos. This one is for $9.99. And I think that that is one of the cost, most cost effective pricing for a Epipremnum Arium Golden Pothos. Most stores or local nurseries will sell them for like $12.99. $16.99 but at a grocery store you can get them for $9.99. I've actually bought it on a reduced price at Kroger for $2.45 and then right over here we've got a Crosala ovata or a jade plant. This one is for $9.99. Um, jade plants I love them. I, my, my grandmother grew them as a kid. Um, I always like watched her take care of them and they're easy to propagate as well. And right next to it is for $19.99 in another Monster Adansonii. Look at the splits on the leaves. Beautiful looking Monster Adansonii. I think Monster Adansonii grow best when you actually grow them up a totem pole versus growing them in a hanging basket. And right next to it for $19.99 is 
a pricey and that's just in my opinion of a um, ficus elastica burgundy i do like the dark foliage leaves and then even the undersides of the leaves with that red veining it's really nice as well gorgeous looking plant it's naturally shiny um, i grow that in full sun some people say that it would burn but even in texas and i tell you we get summers that are 100 plus degree weather for like two two months straight and i was able to grow a ficus elastica burgundy full sun obviously you want to make sure that you're watering it but it is an easy plant to grow it just it's an easy plant to grow when you have the right lighting conditions and typically ficus in general do better outdoors because you can provide that consistent light and then right next to it is a costa farms training tropical plant 16.99 and that's again the reason why you want to go to different places to buy your plants kroger has the most inexpensive um trending tropical plants and then right over here we've got some hedera helix or english ivy this one is just a green form for 9.99 really like this a lot i have killed 14 english ivy um so far and i have one left it's the english ivy batina the last one that i killed and i really thought i was able to like actually make it thrive is because i forgot to water it for two weeks and english ivy don't like to be watered too much um, you really want to, you know, water them at that sweet spot of like um, once per week, but but it just dried out too long and the leaves started to get really crispy. And then over here, we've got a palm uh, for $13.99. Palms, they just really don't interest me. I know some people are into them, but the reason why I don't really like palms, and I say this in every single video, is palms really require a lot of light. And I think there's a correlation when it comes to what makes a plant an easy to care for plant. Here's an easy to care for plant. For $13.99, this is a Dracaena Marley. And I've just said this before, Dracaenas are underrated plants, but when you compare a Dracaena, which tolerates lower light conditions versus a Ficus Elastica, or not even a Ficus Elastica, let's talk about a palm that needs a lot of light. The lighting conditions aren't necessarily um, easy to mimic indoors unless you have a million and one grow lights. And that's not always sustainable either because grow lights take up a lot of um, energy and your energy bill will be high. But lower light condition plants are easier to take care of. Also plants that um, thrive with less water are easy to care for plants. So something like this that I just picked up, this is a ficus lyrata or a fiddle fig leaf beautiful looking plant was one of those most trendy plants every single like plant interior or like um home design magazine would feature these the only problem is with ficus lyrata is number one it does take a lot of light and then number two um the watering and and just the consistency it requires is a little bit more challenging um, I will say this is an easy to care for plant because by default an Epipremnum arium or a pothos plant um, can tolerate lower light conditions, can tolerate a little bit more drought. I wouldn't say you want to like not water them for a month because I am currently torturing a Epipremnum arium marble queen pothos. I have not watered it for a month and some of the leaves are already crisping up and like yellowing. So that's just bad on my part. But Global, global Green Pothos, beautiful plant. And then here is a um, ponytail palm. This one is for um, $19.99. Didn't realize a ponytail palm is not necessarily a palm. It is actually a succulent. So with that being said, ponytail palm also needs a lot of bright light. Um, I am still looking for those ghosts. I, I, I feel like this, you know, shopping in the evening, you would think the ghosts would come out in Kroger. Like I said, again, Kroger is haunted with a bunch of ghosts. And so let's see what we have here. I am panning over and you can see this dark um, foliage plant. This is a Raven ZZ, beautiful plant, would make a really good plant for like a Gothic interior just because of the dark foliage. And then right over here for $19.99, this is a Dracaena Lemon Lime. I do think that that is a little bit pricey for a Dracaena. You can get a better price at Walmart. And then here you go. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Tons and tons of ghosts just floating around here. I told you Kroger was actually haunted. Do you see what I'm looking at? This is a bunch of Philodendron Florida ghost at a grocery store. I told you guys that, um, you know, uh, Kroger's was haunted. And this is a second Kroger. Now this is in the nighttime. And if you notice at night, look at how much um, 
more like look at how many more ghosts are actually in existence at this kroger i would count um all of the the plants here i would say there's about 20 of these um philodendron florida ghosts at this location the other one didn't have nearly as many and i've been getting reports that all of the krogers in the dallas fort worth area are haunted with florida ghosts now this one doesn't look like a florida ghost this one has more green and so that's just really interesting the last location i was looking at also had more of a green um florida ghost versus like it being minty and having white leaves i will say that these juvenile form florida ghosts are extremely high quality in a sense that the coloration is really ghostly um look at that like look at these leaves they're absolutely stunning they are white and what what the growth pattern is for this philodendron florida ghost is the leaves will unfurl mostly white and then as it starts to harden and mature it will start to darken and become more of a minty um color these leaves will get extremely large now with the florida ghost um the philodendron florida ghost you do need to grow it up a totem pole or moss pole to get the mature leaves and when i say that the will give you some beautiful leaf shades it is absolutely stunning so i have a florida green which is literally just a green form of it i also have a florida um, beauty which is the variegated form and now i have a florida ghost now these ones are being sold for 29.99 um, and when you think about it it is slightly pricey for this size of a plant but florida ghosts are not nearly as common and for the quality that you're looking at here at least for me these are not a bad price at all for florida ghosts i might think about doing like a plant giveaway for florida ghosts i've been talking about doing a monstera thai constellation giveaway um have no fear guys i will most likely film the reel um that i will post on instagram for you guys to participate in the giveaway but i am looking at these ghosts and they're not scaring me anymore like i was totally freaked out you know when they said that like kroger's was haunted it really is because there's a bunch of ghosts in here they're floating around and what's even more crazy is as i'm walking at these grocery stores nobody has any idea that these plants like these rare uncommon plants are available and it's just really interesting to me like florida ghosts is absolutely stunning i think it's one of those plants that i um could have multiples of i only bought two with the intent of possibly doing a um, plant giveaway but plant foldies what do you guys think of the florida ghost um do you guys want me to keep looking for more florida ghosts let me know in the comments and i actually looked at the website of that actual um, um nursery that is providing um florida ghosts they have a good assortment of um, other rare and uncommon plants like they have um, different types of alocasia that they may end up putting in the market, but it is gorgeous. Florida Ghost does require bright indirect light, um, a more chunky aeroid mix if you're going to plant it in a substrate and they do need to grow on a pole. Um, let me know in the comments, Plant Foldies, if you've gotten a Florida ghost. I know on Instagram, I've asked that same question. For my local Plant Foldies out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, have you made it to a um, Kroger store to buy a Florida ghost? Um, let me know in the comments and, you know, share share your plant finds as well. Um, this one is one that I might actually get. Look at how beautiful and perfect that leaf is. Like, that is stunning. And the fact that they are so white is just gorgeous it's one of the most beautiful looking philodendrons i've seen and i just like how it's got an interesting characteristic when it comes to its growth pattern i have been searching for more uh, uncommon plants and i actually backtracked and checked how long it took for kroger to bring out another type of rare plant so monstera thai constellations arrived in the dallas fort worth area about five weeks ago so maybe every other month i will check um, to see if there is a new like rare plant release um, this is a really good one right here i would say the philodendron pink marbles um, weren't the best ones for me, but I would say the Monstera Thai constellations and now the um, the Philodendron Florida Ghosts have been some really good releases. Um, plant Foldies, I've really enjoyed sharing you guys with my plant shopping videos. I really hope to see you guys um, daily. Um, seven premiere live premiere chats. Let me know in the comments again. I am all about that engagement. And if you notice, I made a slight adjustment in how I say. Hedera Helix at the request of some of my newer plant foldies. I want to make sure that I am um, making people happy and I do appreciate the feedback. Um, 
but yes look at this i can't stop looking at these um, florida ghosts here like even though that the this kroger is haunted with all of these ghosts i don't mind it this is one particular ghost that i would say you should summon upon your home bring them in your home i mean for tw um, 29.99 you can take a ghost home and who doesn't want a friendly ghost they remind me of casper look look at how friendly they look and <laughs> they're just beautiful it, plant foldies what do you guys think? Like, I can't stop talking about the philodendron Florida ghost. I know that certain plants um, shops have sold them for a little bit less, but the fact that you can walk in, pick up a philodendron Florida ghost and, you know, choose which one you want to get. That's really cool. And I have to commend Kroger for really bringing in this plant. You know, they source it out from a particular wholesaler because I actually checked out the website. But like all of these plants, I am really hoping for the ghost sake that somebody will adopt these. Um, um, all of these will sell through because I would hate for a beautiful plant like this to get unhealthy, get neglected and end in the trash. Um, both of the Monster Thai constellations I saw have pretty much sold through. There's that one Kroger that has a bunch of ghosts floating around and one more Monster Thai constellation. So that's cool that all of the Monster Thai constellations have sold through. Um, maybe the florida the philodendron florida ghost will sell through we're just gonna see but let me know which one you would actually pick to take home for 29.99 that is not a bad price at all but i'm really gravitating to this particular ghost what do you guys think like look at how the leaves are just unfurled and they are white and minty and this is one of my plants that i've had become a wish list plant for me for quite a while i didn't expect that but i do want to thank the particular plant foldy that gave me insights about um two days ago from one of my comments so if you hear something about a particular plant getting released out in the market please leave a comment in my videos or even send a direct message to me on instagram you already know i will travel wherever i need to go to get that on film and i did want to show you this 12.99 for this um you know uh, red marantha that's a very good price as well so you can actually get some really good hanging baskets at kroger for 12.99 as compared to like the hanging baskets you find that are usually like 20 dollars 84 but let's go back to these philodendron florida ghosts these don't even look real plant foldies what do you guys think i will see you on the next one bye